morning, everyone. How are you today? This is Pastor Jim Simbola here. I'm reading through the book of Hebrews. You know, I just, before this taping, I taped a tribute for my brother passed away just recently, and they're having a memorial service for him sometime in June. I'm taping this before that. And um, I'm gonna be in Poland and Slovakia, and unfortunately can't make it. I was all set to go and had gotten a reservation to see him before because he passed away because he had been sent home on hospice, but he passed away before I could get there. I thank God for my brother. Do you ever thank God for your siblings? Did you have siblings that you could thank God for? I hope you did, and your parents. We should thank God for every good gift. And my brother, six, seven years older than me, he was a model child. He was really a special man, kind, brilliant, left brain, right brain. You know, was an outstanding student in high school, but then he, he majored in mechanical engineering and then shifted and majored in religion at Columbia. I'm not talking about Podunk U. I'm talking about Columbia University. By the way, you know, I miss him today. Whoever you love, when they're gone, you don't have a chance to tell them how much you love them, although he, know, he knew how much I loved him. We had a good phone call uh, the last time I talked to him. Call him today. Tell him. We're reading in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. And to set the stage again, this book was written to... Jewish converts to Christianity who are now tempted because of persecution or for whatever reason to go back to Judaism, go back to the law, leave Jesus and the new covenant for Moses and the old one. And the writer is saying, this is not a good thing. So he's contrasting the covenants again. Verse 18, you have not come to a mountain that can be touched. He's referring to Mount Sinai. And is that is burning with fire to darkness, gloom, and storm. Verse 19, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to it, to them, because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses who was called a friend of God, said, I am trembling with fear. That's what the law does. And some of you want to go back to that. Why? Because we're sinful and God is holy. And without a mediator, without a savior, without a Jesus Christ, the one and only, that's all the law can do for us. Scare us away. Death, judgment, gloom, clouds, he wants to make this contrast strong, so let's, let's receive it. Because as Martin Luther said, we're all born legalists by nature. We want to earn our righteousness. We want to have something we can show God so that we can get a good report card. We want to do well on all the quizzes, even the pop quizzes. So God can say, A plus, come on home. No. The law gives everyone an F. You failed. You have failed. I have failed. The law can't save anyone. It only brings condemnation and fear and trembling and gloom and death. And yet some people were tempted here to go back to that. And I want to say to you, don't go back to the law. You're going to earn something from God. Understand the beauty, the wonders of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ dying on a cross. You have not come to that mountain. You have, we have not come to that mountain of gloom and condemnation and terror and awe in that sense. No, but you have come to Mount Zion, speaking of heavenly Jerusalem, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. 
So mark, let's mark these words well. Don't go back to the law, earning merit badges. I'll do better today so he'll accept me. No matter how you do or I do, it's all depart from me. Sinners. Once you sin, you can't erase it. Only Jesus could erase that in the new covenant. No, but I promise I'm going to do better. No, Pastor Jim, get a grip. I, no, now I'm serious. I've been there, done that. Death. And elsewhere in the New Testament, it says, everyone under the law is under a curse. Why would we want that? Because it makes sense to us. If I do good, I'll get good. I can't just surrender and say I'm lost and cling to Jesus. Yes, you can. Yes, I can. I hope you have. So remember the contrast here. Don't go back. Now, most of the problems today uh, are people who don't care about wrong, right, God, the commandments. We live in a very pagan world. But even once you find God or your conscience is awakened, Satan uses that to say, come on, come on, show God you mean business. You've been fooling around so long. And grace is, it's a mystery. It doesn't make sense to the natural mind. What do you mean? I get heaven and forgiveness and pardon for doing what? No, just believing and clinging to Jesus. Turning from your old life and saying, Jesus, you're my only hope. And then stay there, as we're going to hear. So I read that again because it just struck me today again how easy it is to go back. The Galatians were in danger of doing that. Read Galatians, the first chapter, second chapter, where Paul has to say, listen, if, if someone preaches another gospel which adds good works to Jesus, there's a curse on them. It's grace and grace alone. It's God doing for us what we can't do for ourselves. It's full pardon just upon confession and faith. But that's too good to be true. You're right, but it's true. It's true. Jesus is true. Praise God. Let's walk in his grace and let's be thanking him all day long. Blessings on you. See you next time. Mm -hmm.